How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Sponge 1000 and in this video we're of course going to talk about Hurricane K and determine if it has a possibility to make history as being one of the only tropical cyclones to impact Southern California and will determine the impact Southern California as well as West Coast and Mexico should experience as Hurricane K continues to strengthen as it heads further northward. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. So let's begin by taking a look at the water vapor MG for Hurricane K. And as you can see, we do have a well-defined center of circulation right now where we are seeing a lot of rotation happening around the center of circulation. However, it's still stagnant at around an 85 mile per hour storm. The uh, the millibar pressure has been lowering, but in terms of its wind speed, it's pretty much has been staying the same over the past several updates as it hasn't strengthened as fast as anticipated, which is certainly good news, but still expected to strengthen close to major hurricane size or even um, up to major hurricane status as it continues ahead for northward because right now the center circulation is pretty much trying to develop a second eye wall and once that eye wall develops then we should see the wind speed greatly increase because we do see that um, the center of circulation along the surface is a little bit exposed and we don't see a lot of convection especially on the western side but we're now beginning to see an increased amount of convection on the western side of this storm and once we see that the pressure will immediately lower quite fast and of course we'll see the wind speed um, increase as a result of the lower pressure on the surface and we do see that there's a little bit of wind shear on the eastern side of this storm now this has been the part of the reason why the western portion of this storm has been a little bit drier with less convection than the eastern side because the eastern portion of this storm has been the faster moving one the wind speed is faster than the western portion of this storm of course because the upper level winds are co the the upper level winds are coinciding with um, going the same direction as the lower level winds so we have been seeing a little bit more convection on the eastern side but on the western side we're expecting to see um, more convection over the next several hours for this uh, shift and potentially into major hurricane status which is certainly not good news now I'm taking a look at what the computer models are stating at this time. Now, the latest run of the GFS model, the 18Z run, has been a little bit more concerning, not only for the West Coast of Mexico, but for Southern California. Because if I were to continue to move forward, we do see that the GFS model still wants to strengthen it down to the 960s, which is equivalent to probably a Category 3 hurricane which is certainly strong and you need to take um, prepare accordingly for the west coast of Mexico but if I were to continue move forward we do see that along the coast of southern California and the uh, northern west coast of Baja California we do see that the center of circulation is pretty much hugging the coast and if we were to take a closer look at where exactly the center of circulation of K would be you're, you're going to see that it's not very far from San Diego at all. I actually measured the distance between, between the center of circulation and the border of Mexico and U the United States, right around Imperial Beach, San Diego. And it's only a, around a 60 mile, um, it's only a, a 60 mile distance away from each other, um, the center of circulation and San Diego, which is certainly concerning. And of course, if this storm were to move that um, far up north and that close to San Diego, of course, San Diego would experience nearly tropical storm force impacts where you could easily see sustained winds over 25 miles per hour and wind gusts between 40 and 50 miles per hour, which could be concerning for you guys, especially since there has been a couple of brush fires as well as wildfires that could spread even more if the wind speed is strong enough around Southern California, which is definitely a major concern. And of course, that would bring a lot more rain for the potential of flooding as well, especially in the more desert areas where you could see a year's worth of rainfall in one shot with this storm, depending on the track of Tropical Storm K. But 
or Hurricane K, which whatever this is, by the time it moves this far north, most likely Tropical Storm K, because of course it's the cooler sea surface temperatures of the Pacific will eventually cool, will eventually weaken this storm, but it still should at least maintain Tropical Storm status because we still do see the millibar pressure is down to 991 millibars, which is equivalent to a tropical storm. Now we do see a lot of moisture throughout Southern California, and you could easily receive two to three inches of rain and of course wind gusts over 40 miles per hour which is definitely a major concern now there's still several factors we're gonna need to take a look at before we can jump to that conclusion that this storm would move this close to san diego because there's still uncertainty with the forecast because if you were to take a look at what the european model is stating we do see that the european model still is more lenient on wanting to steer this far west of the of the southern california coast which is certainly be, be good news and bring a lot less impacts for you guys but um the gfs model however still is persistent on bringing this storm fairly close to the um to the west coast of mexico as well as the southern coast of california which would definitely be more concerning as there's still a lot of there's still time um needed to iron out the forecast as this is as by the time um tropical storm k does approach close to california it's we're still around three to four days out before it really comes close so there's still time to iron out the forecast we're gonna need to wait and see which scenario will be the more correct one and like i said what will what will be the key factor is how much ridging there will be because if this ridge is a little stronger then of course we should expect the storm to move westward earlier which would spare a lot of southern california as well as the west coast of mexico from made from direct impacts from this storm but if this ridge was a little weaker then this storm would take a turn westward a little bit later which would bring more impacts along southern california and san diego as well as the desert cities of california and arizona so we're got, still gonna need to iron out um how um how strong this ridge will be in the western portion of the united states really determine the track of this storm and that really all depends on this trough move that's expected to move through the northern united states that's expected to dip down um it really all depends on the strength of that trough as well as how far south this trough dips down to really determine how much it'll weaken this ridge at a point uh, where it could manipulate the track of tropical storm or hurricane k as it continues to head further northward we're just gonna have to wait and see which will take probably the over the next 24 to 40 hours to really iron out how far south this trough will dip as well as how powerful this trough will be to really determine how much weakness and ridging we will see because that will be a key determinant in terms of what type of impacts you're bound to experience along the west coast of Mexico and the, uh, and the Southern California coast. However, what I could say for certain is that the west coast of Mexico, the west coast of Baja, California, should likely experience major impacts when it comes to flooding. That's almost a certainty at this point, um, no matter how far east or west this goes, because it's unlikely it's gonna take a track so far to the west, I mean, yeah, to the west where you guys wouldn't experience heavy rainfall. So you need to prepare a accordingly throughout Baja California for major impacts potentially when it comes to flooding and California at this point should expect at least some rain from tropical storm K what will likely be tropical storm K by the time it approaches you guys so um the really the key question is how much rain and how much wind and how exactly close this storm will be to really determine um what impacts you're bound to experience throughout southern california but in terms of the strength forecast this is expected like i said this is expected to strengthen close to major hurricane status if not exceed the exceed the minimum required for major hurricane status as it seems like the wind shear won't be enough to really in, um to really slow down this storm let me actually go back to um let me zoom into the eastern pacific map and if i were to show you guys the um, wind shear as it heads further northward we do have a little bit of an upper level high located just to the east of it but you see that these upper level winds aren't really enough to prevent it from strengthening while the european model isn't as lenient as strengthening it as a gfs we still we still see the european model wanting to strengthen this to at least category two status and potentially 
close to category three status depending on the wind field of this storm because of course if it has a smaller wind field with a millibar pressure of 976 millibars and the wind speed around center circulation would be a little bit stronger for that to be um for it to more likely um reach the status of cat um to reach category three status so um, we're just going to need to wait and see um, what the European model is forecasting when it comes to the wind field. But it seems like the, both the European model and the GFS model are agreeing that the wind shear and the stable air just to the west of it won't be enough to prevent it from strengthening as really the only inhibiting factor as it moves up northward is the cooler Pacific waters. But like I said, it won't be entirely enough to completely weaken this by the time it reaches Southern California. So we're going to need a Pay, so it's at least something, something to be aware of along Southern California. Now, um, taking a look at what the ensemble members are stating. Now, I want you to take the, both of these computer models, ensemble members, with a grain of salt because it is a little outdated at this time. The GFS model, as of the 18Z run, has um, been leaning more towards a northward track. So I, so I'd assume a lot of the ensemble members will move northward along with it because I think is as of the 12Z run, which is a little bit outdated and was favoring more of a westward track but it should be a, but you should expect the storm to potentially move a little bit more northward including with the european model because with the latest 18z run the european model is now agreeing a little bit more it will be a little bit closer to the coast now it's still far away to bring any direct and major impacts to southern california but it's still at least clo marginally close enough to where it could bring a little bit more impacts than what the ensemble members suggest right here. So I um, want you to make sure to take these ensemble members with a grain of salt, but we do see that they are all at least forecasting this to become around category two status when it comes um, when it comes to the wind speed. So it's at least something to keep in mind. Um, but taking a look at the um, forecasted rainfall over the next five days, which has been updated um, from yesterday. And we do see that now Southern California, there are portions where you could easily experience over two inches of rain, potentially two to four inches of rain in isolated areas, especially in the higher elevations of Southern California. And this could cause significant flooding in some areas because of course in the desert, such as a city like Palm Springs, you typically only average five inches of rain per year. And in this forecast, while Palm Springs is only expected to receive maybe one inch of rain as of right now there is that possibility that other desert cities could easily experience two to three to even localize amounts of close to four to five inches which is a year's worth of rainfall in one shot which would make flash flooding a lot more uh, um a lot more possible for southern california so you definitely need to pay close attention to this um, because you could experience a pretty bad flood threat in some portions of California. But we're going to need to wait and see the exact track before we can really say that with certainty at this point. Now, I'm um, saying look at the um, wave height forecast because that's another thing that you're going to need to worry about along the West uh, Mexican coast. So if I were to continue to move forward, so um, so give me just a second let me refresh this so take a look at the wave height forecast for hurricane k we do see that around the center circulation we could see wave heights well over 20 feet and this could uh, come ashore along um, the southern coast of baja california so you need to prepare for a potentially major and significant storm surge threat along the southern coast of baja california so make sure to prepare accordingly if you live around that vicinity and if i were to continue to move forward we do see of course the wave heights definitely do decrease of course because the storm gets weaker the wind speed gets weaker and as a result the fetch becomes a little bit lower so of course the waves will eventually will eventually the wave heights will definitely um subside as this storm continues to move northward but we do see that there still could be elevated areas where you could receive maybe close to um, five to seven foot waves along california coast so and, and that could be a life-threatening um, and that could bring a life-threatening rip current rip current that for southern california so make sure to stay out the water 
um, for this weekend for Southern California. I know it's been extremely hot over the past several days, but it's best to do so, especially since there's a high rip current risk. Um, I don't ex necessarily expect coastal flooding from Tropical Storm K when once it approaches California because the wind should be going away from the shore, which is certainly good news instead of onshore, which would definitely which would definitely make the uh, potential storm surge more significant. But I but you should still be aware that the wave heights will be very high for this weekend and a rip current risk is certainly is certainly going to be high as well this weekend now i'm um, taking a look at my forecast when it comes to hurricane k um so i'm still expecting this uh strengthen to major hurricane status by tomorrow and then we should see this um eventually weaken as this heads for a northward but you still see that even this far up north it could still hover around hurricane status and you see that I'm still including Southern California in the cone of uncertainty now that the GFS model is bringing the eye of Tropical Storm K less than 60 miles away from San Diego. So San Diego could still experience potentially close to direct impacts when it comes to Tropical Storm K. It will likely be a tropical storm by the time it approaches Southern California. So make sure to stay aware um, throughout the entirety of Southern California because heavy rain and gusty winds close to 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts are possible right around the San Diego area. Um, so make sure to take those loose things inside if if um, you are forecasted to receive gusty winds this weekend and make sure to stay prepared in case of flooding if you live in a flood prone area. But anyways, guys, I think you guys watch and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and I hope you guys have a great day.